Now, despite our best intentions, sometimes you do get stuck on the mat after your initial attack. And again, my goal in the root is always to drive through, cut that angle, and keep moving while I'm chopping. Okay, but sometimes you do get, get stuck. And sometimes, particularly, I'm a small guy, sometimes going against a larger opponent, I will get stuck on the ground. Okay, so I have, because I haven't been able to drive all the way through. What are the important points to remember so that I don't get squashed down here? If I've gotten into this position, I want to develop a kind of a, of a base or frame here. Now, a couple things that are important. One, it's important that my shoulder is in the lower part of his abdomen, along his belt line here. It's not, it's not down here, okay? It's not way up here. And if it's too low, I'm going to get squished down. It's right in his abdomen. My head is up. My visual attention is going this way. My eyeballs want to be going this way. Very important point on a double leg. And actually, let me back up just for a moment as I describe that. It's crucial when I come in here, either because I've caught to my knees and then come up to drive, or if I'm staying up on my feet and I attack in, that my eyeballs are not going this way when I want to go this way. There's a tendency for you to want to go where you're looking. And you will get much better, you'll have much better success, and you'll have much better momentum, and you'll have much better position if you're looking the direction you ultimately want to go in. Now, that being said, my eyes are going in this direction. I'm thinking hard in this direction. My head is turning in this direction. You'll notice my feet here. This foot is curled down. It's not up, or he can grab over it. It's down here. This foot is not too far forward because if it is, I've got no post back. If it's too far back, I've got no post forward. There's a spot somewhere in the middle that you just got to figure out by yourself by working this position. And a good way of doing that is if Colby, and I want you to watch my feet, please, here, as Colby sp spins this way, watch my feet. You'll notice I didn't keep moving like this and leave this behind. What happens if I did that? If I, he's going to grab. Not only that, if this foot is pointed in this direction. Not only that, if this foot is pointed in this direction, so he's able to grab it, look at the angle of my body relative to his. I want to go in this direction, right? But my eyeballs are going this way, and so is my body. So I'm not in good shape here. So it's crucial when I'm in this position on the double leg, my leg is underneath me here. I'm not so high up, though, and so close to his legs, I can get popped. And my legs aren't so far back that I can get pulled down in front. It's somewhere in between, and that's just something you got to work and something you got to learn by, by messing with this. But a good way to practice is to be tight in here. And you'll notice, here, just stand straight, Colby, for a second. I notice where my arms are. I want to keep my arms in tight. I want to try to keep the crook of my elbows sort of at the crook of his knees. My palms are kind of over his calves. But I'm not holding his, my, his calves with my palms. I'm not doing this. Notice the space. The crook of my elbows is not behind his knees. I want to get as deep as I can. I would much rather use leverage, kind of, I can lift something that's hanging from my upper part of my forearm a lot easier than I can lift something hanging from my wrist. Okay, I've just basic leverage there. So the higher I get his leg up towards by the crook of my elbow, the better. And if I can get it in the crook of my elbow, that's the best. I want to use my strong muscles, my, my chest, my lats, my shoulders, my traps, as opposed to my arms pulling his leg in here. Now, once I'm in this position, what I'm trying to do now, because his weight is equally distributed, or if he's good, his weight is into me, which is what he would want to do defensively. I don't want that. So one of the crucial things, after I've really gotten tight and rigid in here, because I don't want him to pull my legs out, 
Or I don't want him to pull his legs out. Pull your legs out, Colby. Right here, now we got a dog fight. Now it's probably, I probably want to try to bail out here. It's crucial that I do not give up any ground. If he pulls his legs back, I want to scoot in. If he pulls his legs back, I want to scoot in. You're not going to pull somebody's legs in unless you're a horse with your arms very easily. Whereas if he comes out a little bit, if I can just hold them, remember it's harder, it's easier to hold, a, hold an object than it is to pull it in or to push it. Okay, so if I can just hold the object and I can come closer to it, I've just accomplished my purpose. But I don't want to have that happen in the first place. But if it does, if he pulls his legs out a little bit, immediately, I don't wait till I'm out here, I'm sunk. If I'm feeling it come out, I scoop, I scoop. Okay, I can hold it as much as I can. I just try to prevent him from retreating, then I get my hips in. Now all of a sudden I've got better position. I don't want to have that happen. So initially, when I come in, I want to be very tight. The next thing I want to do is I have to shift his weight from 50-50, or if he's defending really good, it's maybe 60-40 or 70-30 here. I need to shift his weight to his far leg, and then I want to drive. And that always should be your root. That should be your root. If I, once I come up in here, I want to push, I want to get the weight to this side here, and I just want to launch from this position. Here. I'm in that same position here. This is up and straight, and I get to the side. In review, this position is important, and the drill to practice it is Kobe spins and I spin with him. Okay, now Colby spins the other way, and what happens? Colby spins the other way. I just post. So, if Colby spins against me, I have a post out here. I shouldn't have to retreat or give ground. However, if Colby spins the opposite way, then I need to keep up with him. And I need to keep up with him by keeping that angle the whole time. If as we're spinning, all of a sudden, he's got this angle. That's very unfavorable for me. So, every little bit he spins, I've got to be spinning as well. And you'll notice where's the center of the circle. Okay, I want to control that right here. Okay, now, I want you to notice something else. As, I, as Colby is spinning, to spin slowly, Colby, when he steps, where is the weight? It's here. He steps way here. Steps, no, wait here, wait here, wait here, wait here. Every time he steps, as he's spinning, the weight is here, now the weight is here, the weight is here, the weight is here, the weight is here, drive. The point that I want to drive when I do my chop is right when Kobe puts his weight down. Because at that moment, there's less probability of him being able to step up to get a favorable angle and post against my chop. Notice as he's coming around here, chop, 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 chop and drive. Chop, drive with the head, push with the foot. Like that. So, just do it slow. I'm spinning, I'm spinning, I'm spinning, chop and drive. Okay, that, that's when you want to chop and drive. Watch. If, if he stop now if I try to chop now, he's, gonna, he's got his weight into me. That's very difficult and very unfavorable for me to try that. At that point, all I'm trying to do is follow him. Okay? So I only want to chop at the point he puts that foot down. Because if I try to chop as I, right here, it's very difficult because the angle of this post is preventing me from pushing in. Whereas, look what happens when he steps. He steps, now he transfers the weight over it, and I come through. Now, I'm doing it, I'm kind of holding him loose now as I'm explaining this, but just like before, what do I want to do? As he steps, I don't just want his weight on that foot. Is he still maybe able to come out to a favorable angle and post to defend against my chop? What I want to do is I want to have him carry some of my weight as well. 
So, as he's spinning around slowly, I'm coming around. He's, I feel, I can feel, I feel that step. I feel, and I jam down here as I drop. So, I get my weight very heavy, right here hard, on that foot. Then I push, I push, and I drive through. And you'll notice sometimes, if you look carefully, when I get to here, I'm not just going to come here. I'll try to give it a little, like that. I'll try to launch off of it. I really try to get some momentum into that, that, that push. Push with the foot, translate with the head. This comes, again, we're not pulling this in. I'm just driving it down, posting at the moment he steps and transfers his weight there. And I'm going to drive. I push, I drop, and I'll kind of get up a little bit here. Keep this up. Keep this right in the pocket. Right here the whole time. So, I'm in the position here. And we have basically two alternatives that we're talking about initially. One is, in this position, my opponent or partner spins away from me or away from my head. And by the way, one thing I didn't mention, it's crucial that you keep your head close to his side and hip the whole time. There's never any space. Just because he moves, there is no, there, there is no space. This, there's contact the whole time with my body against his body. There's never a point in time where I let that hip get away from me. That, that's very, very important. So as he's spinning around, I keep glued to him. This catches up. It never hangs back. I chop and drive at the appropriate time when he puts his weight forward. The other thing is if he pushes back into me, I can just post so that he can't bring me towards my head. I post and push with my head. 